Okay, moving right along. Today, I want to continue with my talk about System 2000 staff notation. Actually get to it this time. And I talked about Immanuel Kant, and I showed you my modified Immanuel Kant thought system. It's modified. But Immanuel Kant said, perceptions without conceptions are blind. And he was right, because what's the point of going through this whole process and spending days or, or months or years thinking about something, all right, and having all these perceptions and not putting those perceptions to good use, not organizing them, putting them to good use. So I think he was right. Now, when I mentioned there were 58 other systems that I looked at, alternative music staff notation systems that were, that were different, that were new, unconventional. I mentioned that Peter George maintained the five-line staff, all right? He kept it. So I thought about that, <clears throat> and I remembered from my previous videos, and I wanted to review this, that back in the 900s, your first staff line was used. It was a, a line that, that any note placed on that line would represent the, the, the F tone, right? And that would have been F3 back in the day. And then, of course, over time, uh, they, they added more lines and more lines. And I already talked about that. You can review that in my other videos. But the point is, they ended up with a five-line staff. Sometimes I call it stave. All right, in, in the United Kingdom, in Britain, they called it stave. And the thing is, you have to wonder, how could it survive so long? How could it survive so long? I am told in history books and on the internet that the five-line staff was embraced and accepted in 1650, and some people, uh, a little bit more conservative, say, no, 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 it wasn't embraced till 1750. But either way, if it were embraced here, it would have been used for 370 years. If it had been embraced here, then it means it's been in use for 270 years. But either way, that's a very long time for this five-line staff to be used. All right. Now, it took 200 years. Let's say it was accepted in 1650. We don't know because we weren't there. But let's say this is true. 200 years transpired, 200 years passed until finally in 1847, Heinrich Richter, or Richter said, you know what, I have a different idea. I'm going to propose a different staff, which he did, a different staff notation system. Or even if it were embraced in 1750, still 100 years would have passed until Heinrich said, hey, I'd like to try something different. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that I, I came across about 58 alternative staff notation systems, and that's a lot. And, and you, you say, well, how can, how can this survive so long? That's a long, long time. Well, I thought about it, and the first line, as I mentioned, used was the uh, uh, red line. And, and you would put notes on there, and that would represent an F, right? In the 900s. Now, in the realm of numbers, and this is uh, arguable, but in the realm of numbers, I noticed in, in my 65 years that the number 9 is profound. I say the number 9 rules all the other numbers, all the other ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I say 9 rules. Now, if you look at the traditional staff, you have nine staff degrees basically visible here within the staff proper. You have five lines and four spaces. Nine. That's nine. I do not think that this can be improved anymore, and that's why I have chosen to use it. I think through the process of uh, the number nine here, incorporation of nine in the symbol, Five lines, four, four spaces. I think we can't go any farther. 
I think nature's saying, hey, you know what? This has been used for hundreds of years. Let's keep it. And I keep talking about all the time I say, hey, I want to simplify and standardize. That's what I keep professing. Well, if that's true, then let's, let's keep this. Let's keep it because why? It's already a familiar standard. It's already a familiar standard. It has passed the test of time. All these people have tried alternative systems and they have failed. You can go on the internet and you'll see there's one or two that are, that, are, that are slowly gaining acceptance and they're beautiful, but it has passed the test of time. And not only that, but this system here, I consider it to be what I call apex proximal. Apex proximal, in other words, even if it only now has peaked or even if it's only if it's going to peak in a few months or a few years, it is still so close to the apex of its usefulness that, that that's a profound point. And now that, as I said, it incorporates the number nine, the ruler of all numbers, number nine. So I'm keeping the five line staff to be used in my, my staff notation system, my idea, which is very simple. All right, moving right along. Now, when I talked about notes and notes, note symbols uh, uh, relating to my uh, chord symbol, I talked about what I call specifiers, sharps and flats. These, they used to be called accidentals. I call them specifiers. And I also mentioned that on the piano or accordion keyboard, the white keys represent the natural notes. And down here on the staff, I talked about how if you put notes on either one of these lines or spaces, they can represent one of these keys, right? But I also mentioned that you can't represent uh, the black keys on the keyboard unless you use specifiers. Okay, I mentioned that. And I also mentioned that one key can be used to play three different notes. I talked about that. All right, I want to move right along now. So bear with me. So let's look at let's look at this uh, keyboard here. All right, one key can be used to play three different notes. All right. So what I did was I made a chart. It shows the piano key. And the correlated notes, right? In other words, this key can be used for three different notes, and uh, this can be used for so many notes, etc., etc. Right? And down here at the bottom, I noticed it's, it's so small. I apologize, but I noticed that there were patterns in the above. In other words, for the natural keys, there's three specific note pattern groups, and then for the sharp keys. There's three specific note patterns. And if you if I hold this up here and you can print screen or stop your video, you'll see that there's three distinct sets of patterns in each group. And you'll also notice that's why there's a little arrow here that the G sharp key can be used to play only two notes. G sharp and A flat. And I point that out because on the keyboard, the reason for that is because you see the G sharp key is trapped in between the two other sharp keys. So its use is limited as far as as far as uh, being able to be used for different notes. It can be used for only two. I'm going fast so you don't get bored and don't hate me. But I say that to say this. We have what we call in music and harmonic notes, which I mentioned before. They are two different notes, but they sound the same when played on an instrument. Here's two enharmonic notes. We just talked about it. The G sharp and A flat. All right. This note... And this note, either one, can be used to make a sound 
at 415.3 hertz. In other words, two different notes, but they sound the same. And if you wanted to use an analogy, you could say, well, well here we have two different actors and, and playing one part. This part can be played by either actor, two different actors, one part. Right? Now, we already talked about that in previous videos. And harmonic means basically incongruity. All right? Could you show you that? Now, I have to say that because what I'm about to say, my simple note system, st staff notation thing, is not enharmonic. It goes a little bit beyond. That's very important to say that. It's a very important thing I have to say. So, let me just go ahead and show you my note symbol. Now, don't laugh. I worked years on this, and, uh, and I didn't talk about it for a long, long time because I was kind of embarrassed. Here it is. Here it comes. I call it the multi-designation note. The multi-designation note. Now, I just showed you a G earlier. Oh, it was a G sharp, but that's all right. Here's a G4, and here's an A4. And remember, this clef is mine. It's the same as the, the, the old G clef. I always use my clef. All right? And here what you have is you do not have an enharmonic note. You see, I had to go through the thinking process, the whole process, to get to this idea. This new, well, I call it new. They, they used these back in the old days, the rectangular shape. But the point is, this note head will represent either a G sharp 4 or an A flat 4. If you want to use an analogy, you could say, well, you have one actor, all right, with one part, but he, he has two or three different costumes. So you could say that. And I say two or three because when you looked at your chart before, you looked at your piano keys, you saw that all of these, all of these piano keys except for one can represent, can be used for three different notes, three correlated notes. The only exception was that G sharp key. And that is where I got the idea and it was solidified, it was fortified by the fact that the sharp keys, all right, the sharp keys can, hold on a second, cannot be represented on, on your staff without the specifiers. The sharp keys were gave me the idea, the impetus to look at a figure that could help me notate them without going crazy and without adding without adding more staff lines. Now see, can you follow what I'm saying? So what happens is my note symbol See, here's the G, and right above the line is the G sharp. Or, here's the A, and on the lower part of this space is the note symbol. It can be A flat, or it can be G sharp. Either way, you don't need to do any more. You don't need to go any farther. I don't think, I could be wrong. Oh, here we go. Let's look at this. Here's an F sharp, all right? Here's your F space. It's in the higher portion of the F space. So it's an F sharp, and your F would still be here. Take up the whole space, it'd be very clear. Here's your G line, so that's below the line, G flat. And then you could be used, it could be used to represent the E double sharp. Here's another one. A, a note head above the line that'd be your A flat or G sharp. As I said, the G sharp key on your keyboard 
can be used for only two notes because it's trapped in between these two sharp keys. It's the only one trapped in. The rest of them aren't trapped in. All right? Took me a while to figure that out, but anyway. Now, the uh, just like with my my chord symbol. Remember my chord symbol was kind of in between what you'd see on traditional notation and in between the linear alphanumeric notation. My chord symbol, all right, was kind of an in-between compromise. Remember I said that? Well, also with my note symbol, all right, the note symbol it's also kind of an in-between compromise, in between your traditional staff notation and in between your piano roll view on your music composition software. You'll see what's called a piano roll view. It's pretty cool. But in between somewhere, my system would fall because of the nature of the note symbol. That's where it would fall because of the nature of the note symbol. When you look at the old traditional staff, which we're going to keep, all right? We're going to keep it. Everybody else except Peter Hayes, it's Peter George, dumped it. But I'm keeping it. You can actually envision now the G-sharp key. When, when you look at this long enough over time, if we could get this incorporated into somebody's software, let's say Finale, Finale Sibelius, or, or Muse Score, or whatever, you would eventually be able to envision on the staff, the traditional staff, you would be able to envision the actual sharp keys. And I think that was the secret to uh, opening up the door for my system. So, and, oh, and here's an example of what you could do if you wanted to use uh, key signatures using the note heads. You can, you can stop that and look at it. Here you have the key signature for B flat. And here you would have the key signature for D, key of D. You can look at that. Very, very easily incorporated um, into systems as key signatures. Very easily put in there. It's just a rectangular note head. You don't need sharps and flats. You just don't need them. All right. Now, here's how it looks. I know it's small, but it's the best I can do. You see, here's the practical note set. Practical being the one you would commonly use, all right? And that would that would incorporate five of my multi-designation notes. I'm trying to make that as big as I can. But for the complete note set, System 2000 complete note set, you would have you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven multi-designation notes. Now you'd have here. Your E sharp and F flat, and B sharp and C flat, but ordinarily you, you, you probably wouldn't use it. See, you'd have that, but you probably wouldn't use it. So the practical note set would be great, I think. The practical note set. And you say, well, what do we have here? Well, I'm showing you a new idea that uses only one new note. Only one. And there are only two staff positions for that note. Only two staff positions. And there's only a slight change in the note head. And, and that's done for clarity and neatness. To keep your musical score neat and to be able to read with clarity, I have decided that, you know, I can't think of a better note head shape. I can't think of a better shape for the note head. Now, if this were printed neatly on a musical score, it would be so much neater than this. I had to do this by hand. But that's it. I'm sorry I took so long, but it's a multi-designation note. Now, I invite you to compare this to other people's modern alternative systems and see what you think. But back in the day, I thought about this. Oh! I forgot to tell you, back in, uh, back in the day, well, be before the internet, I forgot to mention this, I had to go to uh, bookstores or libraries. I couldn't go on the internet. 
Well, at some point in the early 80s, I bought this book, Music Notation by Gardner Reed. It's a very beautiful book, well worth the money. And, and right in the beginning of the book, right in the beginning, on page 32, all right, he talks about modern innovations. All right, and then that's very short, uh, two, three page section. He shows examples of some modern or alternative ideas. He, it's hard to see, but that's what really got me started uh, on this back in the early 80s, uh, back when I got my um, keyboard magazines. I bought this book, and this was a great inspiration, by the way. I almost forgot to tell you. Okay, that is way too long. I'm so sorry, but that's it. That is, that is System 2000 staff notation. It's, it's unbelievably simple. It uses only one new key feature, and that's it. I so hope I don't disappoint anybody. But I love it. I'd like some company to take it and run with it. God bless them if they did. And here's your practical and complete note set. And that's, that's it, folks. That's all there is to it. If you can find a better one for the common musician, the beginner, or intermediate, let me know. Thank you for being incredibly, incredibly patient. And have a great day.